recording. All right, and pick up where we left off. This is from week 20 to 37, which is basically the final um, trimester. Corbin, away. Away. I, I want to see it away. In your, no, no. In your book bag. And your headphones, too. Because I said so. That's a problem. You're not doing anything. You're supposed to be paying attention. Your baby's skeleton is hard enough. The bone in his head is not yet fused together, which will allow them to slowly overlap as his head passes through the snug space of the birth canal. Billions of neurons have developed and are firing your baby's brain, creating essential connections that will help him learn in and outside the womb. Your baby can open his eyes now and see the light that filters through the womb. He can hear, too, so go ahead and talk or sing to your baby. As your due date nears, your baby will shed small bits of vernix caseosa, the white cheesy substance that covers his entire body and protects his skin from the amniotic fluid he's floating in. Your baby swallows some of these bits, along with other secretions, which pass through the digestive system hey. to become his first bowel movement. You all did it, so stop gagging. Weeks, your baby's skin is pink and soft. He's looking aware. less like a little <laughs> alien and more like a baby. Gaining nearly one ounce a day and weighs about six pounds. He's now considered full term. In preparation for birth, most babies will turn so their head is facing downward. Your baby will stay that way, head resting in your pelvic area as he gets ready to greet the world. Hello. All right, upon request, we'll do the um, a girl or boy. Actually, this one's pretty cool. It's freaky as heck, though. Oh, wow. It's animation, so don't worry. You guys can handle it. You can always. Because that's like the texture of it. Baby flakes. All right. So, conception is basically when fertilization happens. Once the DNA from the male and the female um, merge together, that's when the sex is set in stone. Your baby's internal sex organs, such as ovaries and testes, begin to form in the abdomen. Male and female sex organs and genitalia look the same at this stage because they're derived from the same structures. At around nine weeks, boys and girls begin to develop differently. In girls, a tiny bud emerges between the tissue of the legs. This bud will become the clitoris. The membrane that forms a groove below the bud separates to become the labia minora and the vaginal opening. By 22 weeks, the ovaries are completely formed and move from the abdomen to the pelvis. They already contain a lifetime supply of 6 million eggs. In boys, the bud develops into the penis and starts to elongate around 12 weeks. The outer membrane grows into the scrotal sac that will later house the testicles. By 22 weeks, the testes have formed in the abdomen. They already contain immature sperm. Soon they'll begin the descent to the scrotum, but it's a long journey. They'll reach their destination late in pregnancy or for some boys after birth. If you're eager to find out whether you're having a girl or a boy, you'll have to wait until you're at least 17 weeks pregnant. That's when the genitals have developed enough to be seen on an ultrasound. And this one. Oh, well, it's funny. It's a boy and a girl. Yeah, I feel like that's... It's a girl or whatever we call it. All right, let's see this. I think this shows like how the organs are pushed. In your first few months of pregnancy, hormones flood your body. Your baby is still tiny, but already your body is changing. Your breasts start to swell and may feel tender. Tiredness, nausea, and a frequent need to pee are common pregnancy symptoms. In your second trimester, look at the your organs. Your uterus gradually rises up out of your pelvis. You'll start to feel the first flutters of your baby's movements, and will be showing an obvious bump by mid-pregnancy. 
In the third trimester, your growing baby pushes your intestines and stomach up against your diaphragm and lungs. That's why you might be feeling breathless, and heartburn is a common problem too. Your bladder is also under pressure. You'll be making even more trips to the bathroom as your baby drops lower into your pelvis, usually at about two to four weeks before delivery. These symptoms will ease after your baby is born, but your uterus can take a month or so to shrink back to its normal size and position. Like, I don't know if you guys have ever seen anyone pregnant after they've given birth, they still have like... Big belly. That's not nice. I was trying to find the right terms. <laughs> Be very careful how you talk to people. Um, um, and then I'll show you guys... Why Josh is not All right, and the last one. You guys can always find them yourself. In the weeks before birth, your body slows down production of the hormone progesterone while increasing production of other hormones, including prostaglandins, which soften the cervix, and oxytocin, which triggers the uterine muscles to contract. True labor contractions are rhythmic and painful and grow consistently stronger. As the long vertical muscle bands of the uterus tighten, they pull the cervix open. The strong muscles at the top of the uterus push. Remember I said there's like a plug right there and that's yeah. what causes the amniotic fluid to I have a get released. Really the because the, the board. respiratory system oh, yeah. isn't fully, yeah. It's kind of like if you guys have, um, you're going underwater, you know? You're not, your mouth and That's nose aren't exposed to it. You're going <laughs> snorkeling. Yeah, you're still receiving the oxygen. Push down and release, guiding your baby toward the cervix. The mucus plug, a collection of thickened cervical mucus that sealed your cervix shut for nine months, may be expelled days before or in the midst of labor. When the amniotic sac ruptures, your water has broken. It can feel like a trickle or a gush of fluid. It doesn't all come out that fast. Your this animation. Will begin opening and thinning, known as dilation and effacement. You know how when they're talking about like she's two centimeters dilating, that means it's opening up and seventy us uh, and seventy percent effacement, meaning it's thinned out. Once you reach about four centimeters, your body will move into active labor. In active labor, contractions become stronger and closer together. At eight centimeters, you enter what many consider the most painful part of labor: transition. By 10 centimeters, you're fully dilated and may feel the urge to push. This is your signal that the second stage of labor has begun. Your baby will move down with each contraction. The three separate soft bones of his head will temporarily overlap so he can pass through the snug birth canal. Your baby's scalp will come into view. When the widest part of his head is visible, your baby is crowning. With several more pushes, your baby's face, shoulders, and body will emerge. In the third and final stage of labor, your placenta detaches and is expelled. With your baby's first breath, the incredible journey of birth is complete. No way! I'm trying to give the baby some with the uterus. With Just, the, they, they do. The they do give the baby right away to the mother. Even they don't drop the umbilical cord and let them up. Not anymore. Usually what hospitals are doing more often is they used to would take the baby away. They used to take the baby away for like a minute, cut the umbilical cord or the dad um, and dispose of the amniotic fluid, clean the baby up and give it to the mom. Now they just hand it over to the mom. With the, like while she, And then while she's holding the baby is usually when she pushes out again. Because it's, it's research, they're doing like research to show that like immediate contact with a mother and like skin to skin contact is very essential for the child. So that's why I say mothers puts first. Actually, my dad puts first when I was born. Yeah, I mean, when I was a baby, it was just like, you know, well, dad will cut the cord, doctor will cut the cord, and then. Why? Yeah. Why? All right, Why? we gotta go back to this. Huh? All right, where did we leave off? Oh my God. Drawing. Drawing. Did we talk about IVF? I forgot that All right, we gotta talk about this. I gotta move my camera to make sure people can hear me during the recording if they can't. Hear me. 
All right, if you guys, on your drawing, I want you guys to first watch me do this, and then I want you to draw it. Watch me do this first, and then do your drawing. First of all, draw a straight line. Second of all, draw another straight line. Then enough height. Third of all, draw another line. If I tried to talk penguin, it looks like a third. All right. Let me focus. Third one. Draw a little bit. Not even a good shot. Everybody be quiet for one second. Okay. You got the funny there. Put it into your brain. Or so. Do that again. This is the voice that came right for God. You said one second. Dude, is that Pac Man? No. Waka no. Waka. Is that no. man pack? No, it's Pac Man. No, it's man pack. Waka Waka. No, it's Chuck. What's the mother trucker? No, it's Pac Man. Hey, guys. Oh, it's a mother that. Hush. Stop. 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 Yes. When did they share the same umbrella before? No. Oh. Uh, that was actually a good question. Yeah. Is it really two different names? Wouldn't it? Just the map. There's very few of those that I have. What? How come I can't get it right? <laughs> they would have to have different ones because if they have the same umbilical cord, they'd have to come out like, at the same time. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, they'll have the same placenta, I think. Yeah, they'd have to. Okay, so you're uh, yeah, there's, there's two separate yeah, ones that they are born the wrong cord. Either they're the same, same placenta <laughs> like, or two separate wait, placentas. Wait, placentas. Either way, they're wrong. Yes, because if they were to do that, it would hurt a lot. I think it's fraternal twins. Oh, it's probably fine. Like, break two separate All right, this is making me annoyed. Because I'm trying to figure out. I'm so sorry you're having that. I am like so interested in like. All right. It is it is called fertilization. I should say fertilization. That very first cell that's created is called what gauge? Austin? No, the very first cell that's created when the egg and sperm unite. Aiden, what is it? Oh, good. Aiden's doing what he's supposed to be doing. He's looking back in his notebook. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> I, I was looking <laughs> in his notebook. Huh? I don't know. It's between 94 and 95. So. That very first cell, Corbin. What is that very first cell called? Uh, I just had it. It's Tyler, <laughs> what's it called? Oh. Oh my god, I'm literally oh, no, looking at the answer. Well, listen, I know you know because your hands up. You don't I, need to tell me. Josh. Is it Zygo? Zygo. The very first cell. Don't write anything up. Fun. Is called a zygote. It is only one cell. After that one cell turns into two cells, after that one cell turns into two cells, what is it called now? Tristan. It is now called an embryo. I'm going to change that to, it should say, two or more cells. By what process did it go from one cell to two cells, or two to four, or four to six? By what process did it turn into that, Andrew? Meiosis. Meiosis. Okay, meiosis. Um, nope, her life. I said yes. You're wrong. I'm sorry. Oh, no. Mitosis. I know. Mitosis. I, that's the one I meant to say. I, I believe you. It is called mitosis. This column is called an embryo. And it still continues to grow by mitosis. That should say mitosis. And it's still that's an like embryo. Mr. Plant's writing. And then it keeps growing. And it keeps growing. I really have a lot better handwriting this. And it keeps growing on all these cells. 
eventually yeah, these cells need to change these cells need to flatten up and become part of your muscle cells these cells need to um change into round cells and how on the inside to become your red blood cells these cells need to change shape to become your brain cells some of the cells will turn into your sex cells whether they're sperm or egg cells what is that process called gauge differentiation good that is called Difference. differentiation another name for that is what another name for differentiation is what landon change nope <laughs> oh i know austin no I andrew specialized specialization it is also known as specialization, specialization. i could not and it still grows by mitosis eventually it starts to look like don't make fun of my drawing <laughs> and what is it called <laughs> What is the process called? Sorry, what? <laughs> what is the process called of making sex cells? Landon? Meiosis. Meiosis. Now, hey guys, now you can go ahead. Wait, hold on. Do not, wait, what's the name? Now you can go ahead and draw it. But do not ask me. How, what's that letter? Because if you know it says fertilization and you are paying attention to me, you can look back in your notebook where the words are fertilization. If you don't know that set, this says two or more cells. If, don't ask me what this is. This is mitosis. It's mitosis here. It's mitosis here. It's mitosis here. Your notebook shows you how to write mitosis. If you are listening to me, you should know that this says specialization differentiation. If you can't read my handwriting, it's in your notebook. So go ahead and take a few minutes to write this drawing very clear because you will have questions on us. I'm gonna go ahead and clear this and I'm gonna go on to the next thing. Um, so on this question right here, did I resume recording? Yes, you did. Thank you. Base your answers, you guys have this? Yep, 97. My page 97, thank you. Base your answers to question, the question below on the diagram, your knowledge of biology. The diagram represents events that occur during embryonic development. Letters A through E represent structures. Um, Josh, come on, what is A pointing to? Hayden, what is B pointing to? Yep. Uh, Tristan, what is C pointing to? Zygo. Aiden, what is D? Gage, what's E? I will accept embryo. Embryo. Yep. A, between which two letters does mitosis occur? Between A and B, between B and C, between A and C, between C and D. Huh? Between which two letters does mitosis occur? Gage? Or C and D. I meant to say Aiden, I'm sorry. Oh. Yeah, I like your hand went up. Yours didn't, I'm sorry, but yes. The, the answer is four between C and D. Where? B. It happens from C to D and D to E and C to E, okay? After C it happens. B, between which two letters does differentiation occur? Between A and B, between B and C, between C and D, or between D and E? Landon. It's D, um, D and E. Or... Yep, between D and E, because it's starting to change shape, because it changes shape. We don't, we didn't really go into the specifics of that, but yep. Number three. If you guys don't have this in your notebook, that's okay, but I think you do. An, al an alternative to the use of insecticides to combat the Mediterranean fruit fly is a sterile insect technique, or SIT. 
SIT involves the sterilization of male insects by radiation, which prevents the formation of functional male gametes. What is another name for functional male gametes? Corbin, another name for functional male gametes. Thank you. When these male insects mate with female insects of the same species, the result would be that one, only female offspring would be produced. Two, no offspring would be produced. Three, the offspring would have a reduced number of chromosomes. Four, the offspring would no longer be sterile. Tristan. Yeah, if they don't have functional male gametes, male gametes, that means that their sperm cells don't work and if their sperm cells don't work, they could mate, but they're not gonna get any offspring. So the answer is two. Four, a zygote develops into a multicellular organism through mitosis and specialization. Mitosis and meiosis. Recombination and communication. Genetic engineering and natural selection. Tyler, any answer for number four? Nope, meiosis is to make sex cells. Yep, mitosis and specialization. Specialization is also known as differentiation. Five, which statement describes one function of the placenta in mammals? A, it allows blood of the mother to mix with the blood of the fetus. B, it contains fluid that protects the embryo from harm. C, it removes waste products that are produced in the cells of the fetus. D, it synthesizes food for the embryo. What choice is wrong and why? Tyler? Why? Thank you, it doesn't mix. What other choice is wrong and why? Landon? Huh? He's actually correct. So, yeah, the point of the placenta is to remove waste products such as carbon dioxide. It also provides um, the fetus with pro uh, things it does need, such as nutrients and oxygen. Um, a baby does not eat a burger. The mother digests a burger, and some nutrients and vitamins may get to there, but there's no cheeseburger or cheese or ketchup that goes to the Yeah, place. doesn't it? Doesn't like the stuff that like the person eats, like all that nutrients mm. crap go through the umbilical mm. thing. Not really even like that. It's more like nutrients and vitamins. And usually the mother takes on um vitamins, prenatal vitamins in it, but like not really a burger consuming. But it contains fluid that protects the embryo from the harm. That is the amni that's the uterus, which contains an amniotic fluid. So it's C. Yep, hold on. Last one. The development of nerve and muscle and skin cells is represented in the diagram below. So you start off with a sperm cell and it's fertilizing the egg cell, then you get one cell. And that one cell is called a zygote. Then it keeps growing into more than one cell by mitosis. And then you get skin cells, muscle cells, and nerve cells. Hold on. I see your hands up. Which statement best explains how each of the different cell types can develop from the same embryo? By asking, how is it possible to get skin cells from an embryo, muscle cells from an embryo, and nerve cells from an embryo? One, the cells have identical genetic instructions, but different parts of these instructions are being expressed. Um, I'm gonna give you guys the answer. I know the answer. The answer is one. Yeah, because every, your, your, so your skin cells, your nerve cells, your muscle cells, your fat cells, your kidney cells, your pancreatic cells, whatever, they all have the same DNA. They all the same, they all have 46 chromosomes. However, they don't need all of the DNA to be expressed. They don't need to use all the DNA. They just need parts of the DNA. But would it, how, it says identical. 
Yes, because they all have. They have the same DNA. They have 46 chromosomes. Yeah, all the skin cells in your body have the same DNA. Um, they all have the same information. It's yeah, just so it's the person teaching us the parts. exact subject that we're on. I'm thinking number three. Yeah. All right. If you guys would like, you're going to take a quick two minute break. That's that. That door. Here, Tyler. Hold on, let me press pause. Well, you never know. Could it be on? Wrong. You never know. Maybe there's yeah, maybe, maybe there isn't. Uh, oh. Maybe there isn't. Maybe there isn't. Maybe there isn't. Maybe there isn't. Maybe all right, guys. Um, so for your homework tonight, I'm, I'll be posting this on Google Classroom, but I have the hard copy for you guys in person. You have to read this passage, annotate, and then answer the questions in complete sentences. So you have a passage on fertilization, implantation and development. Um, it is wordy and in vitro fertilization. So what type of things can we do to annotate? Landed? Google. Okay, Google what? Okay. Well, I want you guys to tell me what can I annotate? What can I do, Tyler? Underline, highlight, circle. What am I going to underline, highlight, or circle, Corbin? Okay. What else? Um, Josh Clement. All right. What else, Tristan? What would I want to underline, circle, or highlight? Tyler? Thank you. Any vocabulary words that we have gone over or any new vocabulary words that I've never gone over or something that doesn't make sense or any questions. There's some space. There's space right here in between the paragraphs and on the side for you guys to take. For the remote students, um, you answer your questions thoroughly in here, but you guys have lines. Some questions, I gave you guys two lines. Some questions, I gave you guys three lines. If you have that many lines, use them. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing. And 